I've been thinking about rational functions lately because the last video that I posted wasn't about an IA that turned out to be about rational functions. And I don't want to talk about the content and explain the content of rational functions today in this video because I have already done that before. So that is also linked in the description here if you want to go check that out. But I do have one very specific comment that I want to make about rational functions. And in order to do that, I am going to need to talk just a little bit, the briefest of summaries about what rational functions are. So what kind of things do you need to know about a type of function so that you can say you know this type of function? You have to know how to say what the relevant features of this type of function are. So for example, for a quadratic function, you know that it looks like this. You know that it has a turning point at a vertex, that kind of thing. The relevant features of functions is what you have to know about the functions. And the rational functions look like this. They have this shape that has one piece on the side and a different piece on the other side. They have a vertical asymptote and a horizontal asymptote. They always have that. And then most of the time, they're also going to have a y-intercept and an x-intercept. Sometimes it's possible to not have these two, uh, depending on if the asymptote lines up with the axis of the coordinate plane, then it's not going to have that intersect. But that's the exception. In general, you're going to have four relevant features, which are a horizontal asymptote, a vertical asymptote, an x-intercept, and a y-intercept. You also need to know how to find what these features are for a specific function in case they ask you, for example, to sketch the function. And you also need to recognize how the expression for a function of this type looks like. If you just see, for example, 2x plus 3 over 4x plus 7, then you know that the graph is going to look like this. Well, some version of this, right? It's going to have somewhere a horizontal asymptote, a vertical asymptote, an x-intercept, and a y-intercept. But I really try hard to avoid in class to write it in this generality with all of these letters, A, B, C, and D. Instead, what I like to do is always deal with examples, lots of examples with lots of different numbers. So that's what it looks like, right? It's a linear function divided by another linear function. But the reason why I don't like to put the letters in it is the thing that I want to talk about today. And it's not because the students don't like it. It's not because it's scary with a lot of letters. If anything, it's kind of the opposite. I think the students like it too much. Because, for example, when you are dealing with a quadratic function, say it is this example, and then say you are trying to sketch it, and one of the things you need are the x-intercepts. So you want to find the zeros of this function. You're going to put that expression equal to zero. And then you might think of factoring the expression because I chose particularly easy numbers to factor. And there you go. You have your answers that the zeros of that quadratic function were negative 2 and negative 3. But if instead of an example with numbers, you have a quadratic function in general, ax squared plus bx plus c, and you want to find the x-intercepts, you want the zeros of that function, so you want to set that equal to zero, then you can't factor it because you don't know what the numbers are. So the only thing that you can say about it in this case is a formula. It's the quadratic formula for finding the zeros of a quadratic function. This thing is in the formula booklet. And students like that a lot. I don't mean to say that I don't like the formula booklet. In fact, I have a whole other video about the formula booklet, my favorite and my least favorite formulas in it. And if you want to watch that, you'll see that the quadratic formula that I just showed you is actually one of my favorites, so I like it too. But sometimes it does get in the way, because if a student likes the quadratic formula too much, then she's not going to think about factoring when she sees the easy example with the easy numbers. Instead, she's going to take the 1, the 5, and the 6 as an A, B, and C and put it into the quadratic formula, which works, but it's not the best way to handle an easy situation like that. And that's the reason why I don't like doing this with rational functions, because I was doing it with the quadratic functions just now, because the quadratic function is in the formula booklet. But rational functions have absolutely nothing about them in the formula booklet, so I don't want to turn their study into something that is based in formulas because that is not going to work. So I told you that you need to know that these are the four relevant features. 
the asymptotes and the intercepts. And you also need to know how to find them for a particular example. This is not an example. This is a general expression, but let's try to do that. For example, the easiest one, I think, is the y-intercept. What is the y-intercept of a function? It is f of 0. And by the way, these are things that you absolutely have to know as a student. Uh, the y-intercept is f of 0. I was just talking right now about finding x-intercepts, and I said that the x-intercepts are the values of x when f of x is equal to 0. These are generic concepts. It doesn't matter if it's a quadratic function or a rational function or a different type of function that you've never seen before. The meaning of the features is always going to be the same. f of 0 is the y-intercept. The values of x where f of x is equal to 0 are the x-intercepts. So these are things that you absolutely must know. They are not written in the formula booklet because they are not formulas. They are concepts. So let's try applying these concepts to our rational functions. I want the y-intercept, so it's f of 0. What happens if I put 0 for the value of x? Well, a times 0 is 0, c times 0 is also 0, so I'm left with b over d. And then another feature that you're probably wanting to find because you want to find all of them to sketch uh, is the vertical asymptote. Where is the vertical asymptote of my rational function? Well, vertical asymptotes happen at a place that is outside of the domain. So you have a domain problem here in this function, which is division by zero. The vertical asymptote is going to happen uh, for the value of x for which you would divide by zero. So you look at this denominator, when is it zero? It's when x equals minus d over c. And I'm not even going to do the other two features. Uh, I think you get the point. They're all going to be a letter over another letter out of those a, b, c, d uh, that I put in the general expression of the function. Sometimes there's going to be a minus somewhere. It starts to look like formulas. It starts to look like take the parameters in the generic function, a, b, c in this case, or a, b, c, d in this case, and plug them into formulas so that you automatically know without having to think about anything uh, certain things about the function. So with this formula you automatically know what the x-intercepts of the quadratic function are, but this formula is in the formula booklet. So it is okay for you to rely on it because you don't have to memorize it. There is no conceivable reason for you to get confused with this formula because it's right there with you. These things on the other hand are not. There is nothing in the formula booklet saying that for a rational function, the y-intercept is b over d. The vertical asymptote is at x equals minus d over c. This just isn't there. And to me, what that says, what the absence of that in the booklet says, is that they are not expecting you to treat this like formulas. Of course, knowing how to deal with formulas is important, uh, but we already get enough of that. We already have the students working with the quadratic formula, with the cosine rule, and a bunch of other things, but not all math is formulas. So in some situations, the expectation is that you are working conceptually. Concepts are the most important part of what math is. And a lot of times I will say things like, these are things that you have to know. You have to know that the y-intercept is f of zero. You have to know that the x-intercept is the values of x that make f of x equals to zero. You have to know that there are such things as domain restrictions. You are not allowed to divide by zero. You have to know that in some situations when you attempt to divide by zero, that turns the function into a vertical asymptote. And I'm assuming that something as solving the equation cx plus d equals zero is something that you do know how to do, so I'm not worried about that part. But I am worried about when students study together and one of them has understood everything about this topic and the other one has not. So the friend who has not understood this yet uh, will ask her friend, how do I find the vertical asymptote? 
and then the friend who has understood it with all the good intentions in the world will say oh the vertical asymptote is minus d over c please don't be that friend you are not helping you think you are helping i understand that your intentions are good but listen when you answer your friend's question by saying minus d over c i know what you're thinking you're thinking well vertical asymptote is because i can't divide by zero i would divide by zero if cx plus d was equal to zero then the value of x that does that is minus d over c so that is the answer and then you tell your friend your answer but you are assuming that she understands a lot of things that she probably doesn't you are assuming that she understands that the vertical asymptote comes from division by zero you're assuming she understands that division by zero is not allowed. It's a domain restriction. You are taking these things for granted in your friend's understanding because you understand them. And starting from uh, that set of facts that you know, yes, you look at this and you see that the answer is minus D over C. But if all you say is minus D over C, then that's all your friend is going to hear. She's going to understand that you're giving her a formula to memorize because it's not in the booklet. So there are four formulas here, uh, all very similar to each other for the four relevant features of a rational function. And I refuse to say all four of them in one sentence. Of course, I don't know them by heart. I am able to look at the expression and figure them out. But why would I do that? Instead, I'm going to try to help you in your communication with your friend. First of all, if you're the friend who is asking for help, you don't understand a topic yet and then you ask your friend and she answers you with a formula that is not in the booklet it doesn't have to be about rational functions okay this is an example but if you ask your friend a question and they answer with a formula that is not in the booklet let me tell you what you have to do next ask her why be like a three-year-old ask why why a sequence of whys until your friend actually explains something because giving you a formula is not an explanation. And if you are the friend that knows the topic, and now I'm going back to talking about rational functions specifically, these are the things that you should tell your friends that will actually help them. Do not say formulas. Wait for them to say the formulas themselves. Here are the things that you have to say. The y-intercept is f of zero. The x-intercept is when f of x is equal to zero. The vertical asymptote is the value of x that would break the no dividing by zero rule. The horizontal asymptote is what happens when x is very large. These are the things that you need to tell your friend in order to actually help her, okay? So I don't think you should be using any formulas that are not in the booklet. Do not memorize and attempt to use formulas that are not in the booklet. This happens all the time in other contexts as well. So I brought another example. This kind of thing could have been a question for three marks. Show that this is equal to that in a logarithmic situation. And I do have sort of a love-hate relationship with show that questions, but we can talk about that another time. But the fact is that this is a rule of log. If you don't recognize it, if you think you've never seen it before, that's because it's not in the booklet. But it's true. Mathematically, this is a thing. This is correct. It's not even particularly difficult to memorize because it is very similar to this other formula here in blue, which is in the booklet with a different set of letters, I believe. But yeah, when you have a power in your log, right? If the power is inside of the log, then the exponent comes down multiplying. And when the power happens to be in the base, then it's dividing instead of multiplying. This is easy to memorize. I have a lot of students who memorize this somehow because I never tell them this. And then we come to this question and they use it. 9 is 3 to the power of 2, right? So that is the a to the power of b there. So they take that left-hand side of the show that and use the a to the power of b, which was the 3 to the power of 2, by applying the formula that is in their heads and not in the formula booklet. And then from there, they take it straight to the final answer, where it kind of was the use of the formula in the booklet, but it's not very explicit because this looks like division by 2, 
and that should look like multiplication by a half which of course is the same thing but you are in a show that question so the point is that you're supposed to show not that these things are the same you have to show that you know they are the same so i wouldn't bypass showing all the steps in a show that question okay from here first i show that i know that division by two and multiplication by half are the same thing i may be exaggerating but i want to be on the safe side and then i explicitly show the use of the formula from the booklet which still has a thing in the exponent it's that b up there so i am not going to turn that into the square root of x from here to there in one step i'm going to go through here first and then take the opportunity to show that i also know that x to the power of half is the square root of x this is how i would like to handle show that questions by actually showing that i know all of these things but if i present this as my answer i don't think it looks like the student knows all of the steps to get the three marks i think it looks like she knows about the square root rational exponent thing she knows about the exponent rule from the booklet and she knows that multiplying by half is the same thing as dividing by two but what it looks like to me is like she's trying to fool the examiner by working backwards and then just saying well this is probably equal to that because it's a show that question so the result is going to be correct so i'm going to do it step by step i am not going to use a formula that is just in my head and condenses like three or four steps into one thing it may be very convenient for speeding things up but in a show that question where you are asked to show your knowledge uh, that doesn't show the knowledge that hides the knowledge so you have to use the things that you are allowed to use and the first thing that i'm going to use here is the change of base formula which is in the booklet because the original question is suggesting that to me right the left side is on base nine the right hand side is on base three so i probably want to change the base so this is the beginning i've used the change of base formula i showed that i know how to use it that's probably one mark already uh now i am showing that i know that the log base three of nine is two that is also probably worth another mark the thing about division by two and multiplication by a half is probably not big enough to be worth a mark all on its own but the usage of the formula for the exponent that is in the booklet that may very well be worth a mark and then showing that you know about the rational exponent being equal to the square root probably not worth a mark in this context because it was the answer given so the last step of a show that tends not to have a mark for itself but you should write it down anyway so uh today we started by talking about rational functions we ended up talking about logarithms uh, what was the point of this video the point was help your friends don't teach them to memorize formulas that are not in the booklet i know that if you're using this formula for yourself to speed up calculations and solving complicated equations then you probably know what this is this is just a faster way to say the conclusion for a change of base this can easily be deduced in two or three steps from the change of base formula but the thing is if you know this and it's useful for you don't teach your friend she hasn't gone through the same process that you have of deducing this and understanding that this makes sense and that this speeds up calculations in some situations you're trying to make your friend skip steps in her learning this is not helpful let them be slow let them write calculations to find out the values of the features for a rational function it's not important that she looks at it and sees the answer in her head as fast as you do what is important is that she understands the concepts and if you can help her with that then yes, you will be helping your friends. So try to think in those terms next time you're studying together with somebody, okay?